Today, we're going to check out the new AI feature that's been added recently to Depicta. Now, Depicta have sponsored this video, but as always, with any of my sponsored content, there's no opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate how this all works, then you can make a more informed decision for yourself if you want to check it out. So let's first of all head over and take a look at what we're going to be doing. So this is our online store. As you can see at the top, it's pretty plain and boring, and we need something that's kind of in keeping with this whole sort of beauty type of website where we're selling all different kinds of beauty products. So we're going to create a hero section at the top up here that's going to be the kind of focal point for our homepage. So what we're going to do, head over into the dashboard of WordPress. I've already installed Depictor Pro, and I have the new Depictor options on the left-hand side. We're going to come down and choose Add New. And after we do that, this will then take us into the create a new slider section. And as you can see, there's an abundance of starting points that you can easily use to get started with the design that you want. So you can use these as a starting point should you want to. However, we're going to be using the option to create a slider with AI. Let's choose that. The first thing you need to get is a kind of overview video, which I'm going to kind of cover pretty much everything and probably a little bit more to what's covered in that video. So stick with me and let's go ahead and click on start. Now, once you click on start, we've got a four step process for creating our AI powered design for our hero section. First of all, we can choose what following category kind of fits into what we want. So we've got business and news and media and so on. Other if it doesn't fit into this category, but we're going to use health and medicine as our starting point. We'll select it and we'll click on next. This is then going to ask us to write a description of what this particular slider is going to be about. For our example, we're going to say it's women's health and beauty products, which is in keeping with what our online store is all about. Next, you can choose the number of slides that you want to use for the starting point. We're going to choose three, but you can choose between one and five, and you can still go ahead and add or delete anything you want after you've used this step-by-step -step wizard using AI. So don't feel like what you create now is what you're stuck with. You can adjust that as you need to once we run through the AI wizard. So next up, let's click on next. This is then going to go ahead and look for related keywords that it's going to use to create our slides based upon the actual information we've just given it. In other words, women's health and beauty products. So this is now what it thinks is going to be the most relevant keywords. For our example, we're going to choose skincare. We'll choose wellness and we'll choose grooming. Click on next. And that's now going to use those keywords to create our slider for us. And it'll create the content for us, the heading, the subheading, content text, so on. And it'll give us the keywords to search against either stock images or we can use our own images. So after a few moments, this is now the content for slide one. You can see we can choose from skincare based sort of stock images. So we can easily go through and find something we think is the most relevant to what this particular slide is going to be about. Or if you don't find anything inside you, or you've got a client that supplied you with images and something you've uploaded yourself, you can simply use the My Photos option. That will take a look at your library and you can choose the image or images you want from there. For example, though, let's go back to stock images. And let's say, I like the look of this one for this kind of skincare to start off with. We'll select that. And then on the right hand side, it now gives us the information for the heading, subheading, content, and any button label we want to add to it. So we can easily change things inside here. There we go. We can change the heading. If we want to adjust the subheading or the content, we can. Let's click on next. Say we're happy with this first slide. That's then going to take us to our next slide. And you can see this now uses a different keyword from what we chose back in step two. We can then go ahead and choose an image that we think is relevant. Or again, we can use my photos. So for this one, we got relax and unwind. Let's say we like the look of this image. It looks kind of nice and cool. And we'll say we're happy with the headings and so on, the content. And we'll click on next and move over to our third and final slide. For this one, let's choose this image and click on next. So that's the three of our slides basically chosen the content. Now we can choose the color scheme that's going to be applied to it and also pick a starting point for our design. Now I'm going to pick this color option on the left hand side with a sort of pinky red in it. We'll choose that and you can see now that updates to show us all of the different hero sections in this example for our slides. And if we choose a different option, you can see things will update accordingly. So if I prefer a lighter option, I can choose that from there or the darker option, I can choose that. Actually, I quite like the light version. Let's scroll through and we can take a look at the different designs. So you can see we've got a lot of really good starting points. I kind of like the look of this one, lets the image be the focal point. We'll choose that from the list and we'll click on next. Now that's going to go ahead, customize the designs using the photographs and the text and so on that we've just selected as part of this wizard process. And you see this now allows us to preview the slider or open it up in the editor. Let's click on preview slider. 
This will now give us a preview of each of the slides, the animation effects that's been applied to it, and we can easily come in and see exactly what it's going to look like on the different devices, desktop, tablet, and mobile, and so on. We can jump back, we can go ahead, we can try all the navigation options, we can click through to the next slide, and the third and final slide, click to go back to the first slide, so we can see all the animation effects, everything. If you want to replay it, we can replay it, or we can close that down now, and we can go ahead and say, open this in the editor, and then we can start to make changes and customize every aspect of this should we want to. So let me give you a quick overview of how you can start to make very quick edits. Now, the interface has a ton of options, and I would recommend getting in and experiment with it. Even if you don't have the pro version, you want to test this out, you can use the free version. So first of all, let's take a very, very quick look at what we have. You've got all your stock images and so on on the left-hand side. You've got all the different options for your text, your videos, your shapes and colors and so on on the left-hand side. Across the top, we can go ahead and switch between the different views. We can switch between the different slides. We have options. And then on the right-hand side, we have all the different controls that we have based upon what we select. So let's go ahead, first of all, and take a look at all the slides we currently have. Now, at the moment, we're looking at the first slide, but we can easily use the next slide option underneath, and that will allow us to easily go ahead and jump through to the next slide. If you have a lot of slides, though, that's not necessarily the best way of working. So you can click to open the slides panel, and this will then show you all of the different slides you have as part of your slide setup. You can then simply choose whichever one you want from your list in whatever order you want. And in these three dots in the top corner, you can click and you can choose to delete or duplicate that slide. So if you want to add more slides in using this as a starting point, you can simply duplicate it and then make whatever changes you want. If you want to delete one, well, you can do that as well. Then if you go ahead and click on anything inside the editor, for example, we'll choose this heading section. You can see we can select that and then the options on the right hand side will update to give us all of the options for that specific component inside the slide. So if you want to change your typography, you can change that inside here. So you can inherit it from the theme. So if you set up a global sort of typography settings, inheriting from the theme makes the most obvious options. So we can choose that and we can adjust the tag that's being used, the weight, the color, all the options that you should need to do anything you want to style this however you want are all available inside you. You can jump over to your options and in there there's more options again. So you can apply responsive resizing, you can apply custom styling options. There's an abundance of options for how deep you want to get into this to customize it. Hover effects, you can apply that. You can adjust the animation effects in here for both the animation in and the animation out. Any delays, direction, movement, all those kinds of things. So if you don't like what the AI has created for you using that template, you can adjust it using the options inside here. You've also got actions inside. So for example, if we select our button, we can choose where we want that to go to by simply choosing the action option. We can choose to have go to URL or we can have it scroll to a different part of your page. So this could be take a look at our best sellers. You set that as anchor text on your homepage, for example, and then you just say you want this to scroll to and it'll scroll to that particular part of your page. Tons of options inside you for controlling exactly what and how everything is controlled. If you want to change the images, you can simply come over, choose the background, and then you can go ahead and search inside here for any image you want. So we can come into health and wellness, for example, and we can say we wanted to choose something different. You can also incredibly easily set up how you want the image to be conveyed in the background. So you can see underneath the general section, you can apply custom options. You can have it to contain, center, stretch, cover, all those options you're used to when you're working with any kind of design tools, all those are available inside here for the background. So there's an abundance of options for controlling every aspect. Coming over to the left-hand side, you can come into your options, for example, and inside here, you've got even more controls. So you've got your general, so you can come in here, you can adjust the slider layout, so you can have the full width, you can have full screen, you can have boxed, all those kinds of pretty cool options. Come back out to your settings, you can control your navigation, so how these navigation buttons work. You can set RTL, so if you're in a country that uses right to left for your text, you can have the controls inside you for that. You've got sliding transitions, loading options, so you can set up loading animations. You can choose load how the slides load in, so if you want to optimize things to make it as optimal as possible, when you're loading these in, you can choose exactly how things will load in. You've also got your advanced options then where you can come in and you can customize various different selectors and so on. So there's a lot of options if you want to get really granular with your control side of things. And you've also got callback options as well. 
Come back out of this, you've got your text, you've got videos, you've got shapes and vectors, buttons, control. You, you've got tons of options inside you for exactly how you want to use this. So now we've seen some of the basics of how everything kind of works, the tools and the functions. There's one other thing I want to show you, and this is pro only, so you are gonna need the pro version. But if you have a online store like WooCommerce, you may wanna create your own hero slider that uses dynamic information like your best sellers on sale items and so on. Now this is beyond what I can cover in this video, but I do wanna show you that those options are available to you should you want to use them. So if we have a slide selected, if we come out to the data sources option in the top right hand corner and select it, you'll see we've got options inside here. Now we don't have to have WooCommerce installed, we could just use normal WooCommerce posts. Great if you have a kind of news or blog kind of page where you want all the recent articles to be featured in a certain way using a slider. You've also got then, like I said, the WooCommerce products. So for example, we can open that up and then we can choose where we want to pull those from. So best sellers, top rated features on sale and so on. So you could easily create your own custom kind of layout using these options and then pull in dynamic data from WooCommerce, from WordPress, those kinds of things. And you'll see on the left hand side, it's really nice to see you simply just drag in the options that you want. So product image, the product link, secondary images, product price, and so on. You would literally just drag these into your kind of design and that will then pull in that data dynamically based upon what you set up for the criteria. This opens up a lot of powerful options using a great looking slider design that you've created either with AI or from scratch and you wanna link in your dynamic data. Check that out, that's really powerful and really useful. And then once everything is set up the way that you want, it's really easy to start inserting this into your design. Let's go ahead and publish this to say we're happy with everything. We'll say publish changes. And you see what this gives us now is it gives us short codes, which we can use if we want to. And if you want to use this directly inside your theme itself, so maybe you're getting into the PHP code, you're creating custom themes, you could do that. However, the easiest way is once we finish with this, we'll just close it down and go out of this back to WordPress. We'll open up our pages and open up our homepage. Let's open up our list view. And I've already have a container at the top of the homepage ready to have my slider inserted. So all I need to do is click on the plus inside that container and I'm gonna search for depictor. And there we go. We can choose that from the options and you can see now it just says, please select the slide that you want to use. So we'll choose the options from there. So we'll choose my AI slider. And there we go. There's my slider inserted into that. And now all I need to do is update my page and let's go ahead and preview this. Come back in, this is what we started off with. Let's refresh the page. And there is now our hero section with our animation all loaded in. And as you saw, that was in real time. That was literally, I refreshed the page and the slider appeared pretty much immediately. Let's go ahead, jump to the next slide. The next slide, click again, that'll take us back to the beginning. So it's very, very easy to start using the AI functions as part of Depictor Pro. It's also very easy to get in and start customizing exactly what you have, starting out with the AI and then customizing it to your own heart's content. There's so many options inside Depictor and Depictor Pro, it would take me hours to cover everything. But hopefully this has given you an idea of how you could use it in your designs and how the AI functionality works. But if you want to learn more, I recommend checking out the Depictor website. It's going to give you an abundance of information. There's also a discount code in the description below. Check that out if you're interested in grabbing the pro version for yourself and you'd like to save a little bit of money. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.